You are live. Uh, we will start in a few minutes. Yeah. Hola, buenos días, Germán. Germán, ¿cómo estás? Eh, hablas con Oscar García. Mira, yo te estoy hablando de parte de Juan Sebastián de Web Congress. Eh, yo soy la persona que está a cargo de la, de la sala y no te vemos conectado. Pero no estás en la sala de inglés. Yo estoy con Juan Miguel. Yo estoy con Juan Miguel. Pero seguramente es la general. Acuérdate que tienes que, si quieres, yo te envío. Eh, si quieres, salte a la. O sea, ahí hay una cosa que dice el Deep Studio, ¿sí? En la que estás. Y bajas, te metes en el día 23 y te metes a la de, a la de inglés. Cuando ahí abajo de la sala que tú estás, te va a haber una pestaña que dice Deep Studio. Dejar estudio. Sí, sí, sí. Entonces, ahí te van a salir una serie, una serie de salas. Tienes que buscar abajo en la fecha, en la del 23, la que dice inglés. audio? Tienes que entrar en la de English, la que dice en eh, English. Allá abajo vas viendo por fecha, hasta que veas la de la del día de hoy y la que dice en English. O en eh, eh. Sí, en la de YouTube eh, de, ya debe estar al aire, ¿verdad? Tú ya ves, el, ya está el YouTube. Vamos a hacer una cosa, eh, Germán. Te voy a enviar por WhatsApp el link. Ah, ya, acá ya está. Entonces te voy a pedir un favor. Tú nunca, nunca, nunca eh, te mutees desde tu PC. Que cualquier cosa yo te muteo, porque si no pierdo el control sobre la sala. Te voy a subir a la sala. ¿Sí? Y te dice... Arranco con un plano general. Y luego... Eh, eh, Juan Miguel, que tú vas a arrancar. ¿Listo? Aló, aló. Germán, si tú empiezas, eh, va a haber una parte que va a ser en inglés y ahí yo los voy a mutear, básicamente, porque pues es eh, David Disney y otros representantes. De resto, ok.
Gracias, buenos días a todas las personas que nos acompañan. Muchas gracias. Les pedimos que por favor tomen asiento, que ya vamos a...
bueno, pues bienvenidos a la fiesta. Bueno, quiero pedirle entonces primero a, a Eduardo y a Antonella que nos cuenten dar nuestras felicitaciones por todo lo que hacen y además agradecerles por estar acá. Y... Ese lo hago, entonces eso. 
trabajado virtualmente. Caribe. A mí, sí, es que sí. yo no veo tan bien, entonces okay, necesito una señal más clara. Ya están conectados. Listo, gracias. Bueno, a las personas que nos acompañan conectadas virtualmente desde muchas partes de la geografía de América Latina, el Caribe, de otras partes del mundo también, les queremos agradecer su presencia, igual que a quienes están aquí con nosotros en el Salón Bolívar de la Casa de Nariño de la Presidencia de Colombia. Para el Programa Mundial de Alimentos de las Naciones Unidas y para el Gobierno de World Colombia, Food Program of the United Nations and for the Government of Colombia, it is a pleasure to have you here at the opening of this that will be the first activity of three days until Thursday, all of them in the morning, where we will talk about the various projects that started since the launching of the platform uh, Innovation for Nutrition. I know that all of you who are here will not miss anything, but I also invite you to follow us in the uh, following days through any of the other channels that will be broadcasting the web page, Innovation for Nutrition. Uh, it's uh, number four, innovationfornutrition.org. And we will also be broadcasting through Facebook Live, through the World uh, Food Program uh, Colombia, and of the uh, government's uh, web page, also through the YouTube channel of the World Food Program. And you will uh, you will be able to on, uh, download the application E4N Innovation for Nutrition in order for you to follow the sessions and through the web page innovation for nutrition uh, we are broadcasting through three audio channels you may choose uh, any of the channels those who are here present i think that outside uh, you were able to collect uh, the earphones we will be translating into english and also into spanish and also you will be able to listen to the original uh, Spanish language presentations. So please uh, choose the language of your preference. Let's uh, please stand up for the national anthem of Colombia. You may sit 
again, uh, before we continue with the first point of the agenda, which are uh, the uh, words uh, sent by President Duque and Mr. Antonio Guterres, I would like to comment about this initiative that was launched la uh, last February and that has undergone several important points. One is the signature of the regional agreement for food security. Today, uh, this pact will be uh, subscribed and there are many ways to join this agreement not on, or pact, not only at governmental level. I would like for you to know about all these different alternatives so that you can communicate with other actors so that they can find the right uh, role in this initiative. They could be strategic uh, partners or uh, partners for technical cooperation, also signees of the pact as uh, will be done by nine countries. You may be also sponsors, uh, donors, uh, partners, activists, and main partners. So now uh, let's uh, welcome the First Lady. She will be with us in a few minutes, but I would like to tell you about some other important uh, moments in this program. This is a global event to commemorate the commitments and to talk about the progress of the initiative. Please welcome the First Lady with a big round of applause. <laughs> you may take a seat, please. We thank all those who are connected uh, virtually. We have just greeted the First Lady of the Nation, Mrs. Maria Juliana Ruiz. So let's continue with the agenda. As I was telling you, President Ivan Duque and Mr. Antonio Guterres uh, sent us a video a few minutes ago. You know that the General Secretary of the UN arrived last night in Colombia in an important visit to commemorate the five years of the signature of the peace agreement between the government and the FARC guerrillas. So he has a very tight agenda and they have a tight agenda and they cannot be present here, but they sent us this video. It is an honor for me to greet in Colombia the General Secretary of the United Nations, Antonio Gutierrez, a visit that is historic and that will allow us to see the implementation of peace with legality and other programs in Colombia with the very valuable support of the UN. Today, we are very pleased to send a very important message to this initiative, Innovation for Nutrition. Innovation for Nutrition is a transformational initiative for Latin America and the Caribbean, through which, uh, through which uh, with nutrition, uh, they will become a pillar for the social development of the region. And what's most important, one of its most important components is innovation, because we aim to incubate, to accelerate and escalate different types of solutions to close gaps in, on this matter. A nutritious uh, feeding is an important factor for human development. And with our initiatives, we will have an, a positive impact to develop the talent and to have a more equitative society in the future. So I thank the World Food Program, our partner in this initiative, as well as my wife, the First Lady of the Nation, and the uh, Special Advisory uh, Council of the Presidency of the Republic for their efforts against malnutrition. This initiative also gathers different sectors of the public, private sectors, uh, young uh, people and international organizations uh, with which we will contribute to have an impact in different sectors of society. 
present in our country, as I said uh, at the beginning, our great friend, the General Secretary of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, so that we can go forward in an agenda of peace with legality. And we take this opportunity for this greeting to reach all the participants of this great forum of innovation for nutrition. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for heading this program through the United Nations, and please count on Colombia. It's an enormous pleasure and an honor to have the first visit uh, in Colombia in the post-conflict. This reflects the, the deep solidarity and the deep commitment of the United Nations with Colombia, its people, and its government in this very important action of consolidation of peace and the implementation of the peace program. I wish to convey my solidarity, but I also wish to thank the invitation of the First Lady of the Nation, Mrs. Maria Juliana Sandoval, and the Special Advisory Council for Childhood, and the Presidency and the World Food Program to greet you today and to participate in this event. Over 50 million people suffer from hunger in Latin America. This situation is unacceptable and it's been aggravated by the effects of the pandemic generated by COVID-19. And, and the signature of the Pact for a Great Alliance or Partnership for Nutrition and Zero Hunger in Latin America and the Caribbean are a key effort to, civil, to vis visualize the enormous problem uh, faced uh, by the people in, Colo in, in, in Latin America. I wish to thank the government of Colombia for promoting this great initiative and for the, its commitment for, in sustain, to sustainable development and a call to contribute to the food program. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President Duque and Mr. Antonio Guterres. Um, now I wish to invite the First Lady of the Nation, Mrs. Uh, Maria Juliana Ruiz. Good morning to all. I wish to start with a special greeting to the special advisor for childhood and adolescence, who has been an inspiration and an engine for everything that we have been sharing with Latin America and the Caribbean. Special greeting, of course, uh, uh, to Mr. F uh, Omar Franco Torres, the Minister of Rural Development, Mrs. Maria Dolores Castro Benitez, Regional Director of the World Food Program, Mr. Carlos Caravela, a special greeting. We have built all of this starting from a dream, and the World Food Program has become the engine that gave way to this project and that will take uh, this to a happy success. I uh, take this opportunity to acknowledge the commitment and the leadership of the World Food Program and for its commitment with Latin America, hand in hand with the efforts of uh, many of our countries and that is reflected right now in what we are going to uh, show you to, uh, these days. In that same regard, we thank for the General Secretary of the United Nations for his support. I think that this is evidence of a coordinated effort, a, an effort, a team effort, and also an effort that is made collectively. And to the ambassadors who accompany us today, thank you because you have been a true conductor of good news. You have supported us 
when you learned about uh, what it means, um, innovation for nutrition, you were willing uh, to share the information with your countries to strengthen this partnership. Uh, I wish to thank Mr. Rafael Pardo Paredes, the ambassador of the Republic of Ecuador, Ms. Irana Vaga Santis, ambassador of the Republic of Guatemala, Mr. Salem Roche Gandawis, ambassador of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, you have been also a great uh, uh, partner on youth issues, which is very, very much present in Innovation for Nutrition. The, the ambassador of the Republic of Chile, Mrs. Maria Antonia Namarro Bustillo, ambassador of the Republic of Honduras, and Maria Liliana Hernandez Fuentes, ambassador of Panama, Mr. Balduino Carniero, ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil, Mr. Max Valverde Soto, ambassador of Costa Rica, Mrs. Sandra Alejandra Morales, ambassador of the Republic of Salvador, Mr. Julio Cordero Espailat, ambassador of the Repo Dominican Republic. Uh, let me tell you that by uh, upon reading this list, I am uh, excited because I notice what it means uh, for Latin America and the Caribbean to be united. Thank you for being here. I also wish to greet all of those who accompany us virtually and all the directives and representatives of the different organizations present here. Francisco, thank you for your promotion and support. Thank you for promoting innovation uh, for nutrition, for your deep commitment. I think that you may have noticed that uh, for me, it's a true pleasure to be sharing with you this morning. And I say not only uh, in my role as the First Lady of Colombia, but also as a citizen, as a citizen of Colombia, as uh, someone who is a part of a Latin American region, and also with the commitment of a country that is a part of a planet that needs us. There are different factors that have made innovation for nutrition uh, to reach where it has reached. There is a fundamental commitment, and it is that we have seen the determination, the vocation that many countries such as ours have had to take this, to take action and particularly what we have seen today that has been, uh, become stronger and which is the most powerful tool which is, uh, ha which is having made of collaborative uh, efforts the most valuable tool to combat hunger in our countries, the most important or invaluable tool to make the transit um, towards this wish to combat deaths by malnutrition, to approach malnutrition and to uh, make sure that we can reach the food security in our countries, that, which transcends the region and which encompasses the entire world. Um, the President and the Secretary General of the United Nations mentioned this, and it is that at this moment, we face a double challenge, or perhaps uh, doubly reinforced, which is to work rapidly in the decade for action. And in addition to that, to do so, taking into consideration the fact that we have suffered a pandemic that not only has limited the conditions to, to go forward, but additionally, made it uh, uh, lose ground. The situation is so critical that in Latin America and the Caribbean, we have had 14 million uh, persons who were victims of um, food insecurity and who were considered citizens who were victims of hunger 
And this has caused a tremendous impact on the development, not only physical and cognitive, but also on some, uh, something transcendental for sustainable development. Uh, we have lost productivity. Very few times we, have, we are able to make this direct linked, uh, link between hunger and the difficulty to make progress in terms of uh, the productivity of a country. This has been the main motivation from uh, Colombia. This has been our goal, perhaps with a holistic view, and I uh, recognize this uh, personally, with this sense of working for nutrition for all Colombians, this has been my purpose, my goal, and perhaps beyond a context that might uh, be romantic when I talk about the nutrition of the soul, to be aware of the fact that when we are um, helping human beings who have the cognitive, physical, and emotional capacity to develop in uh, equality, in equal conditions. Uh, once we have that, we will be able to contribute to, to the sustainable development of our nations. COVID-19, as I said before, imposed on us a major challenge, which is to overcome that difficulty in growing and uh, due to the pandemic. Thank you again because your presence here, because those who accompany us virtually are saying we are a part of a team. We are a part of a team that builds uh, together. We are a part of a team that is able to give and to build for others. And we are a part of a team that wishes uh, to build a future uh, with which we have dreamed uh, of to overcome such problems as hunger and malnutrition in our countries. There is something that contextualizes today's encounter, and it is the uh, work that was presented in Colombia in the recent uh, food security summit that took place in Rome, and it is the Great Alliance for Nutrition uh, perhaps you will uh, hear about uh, this concept later on, but by, part of a national goal, it is a part of a national goal, which is to combat deaths by malnutrition of children under five in Colombia and to contribute to the food security in our country. I wish to tell you that it has been very motivating but not fully satisfactory to learn that in the framework of this great partnership or alliance for uh, that has involved many sectors in a very coordinated effort and collaborative effort, which is permanent and progressive, we have been able for in the, in the year of the pandemic, for Colombia to report the most significant figure in the reduction of deaths by malnutrition in children under, under five years of age. This has been our motivation to share this, and perhaps the greatest achievement has been uh, for, that you were able to see the opportunity to generate this great commitment, this great pact for a great alliance for nutrition combating zero hunger for Latin America and the Caribbean. This is our uh, main goal from here on. Uh, a few very inspiring words come to my mind from a speech given by the executive director of the World Food Program in the framework of that summit in Rome, he said, no more meetings, no, no more words, only actions. Today, we are acting as a region. Today, we are acting as a team. Today, we are acting as citizens committed with the social responsibility of combating hunger in our countries. And to do so with something very valuable, I wish to mention th three things that are fundamental uh, to me. 
to start from the identity of importance of micronutrients products and the logistics chains, the local chains, and the, in understanding in that in each one of our countries, as in Colombia, from each one of the territories, uh, they understand that there is an enormous capital, a great richness in our countries uh, to be able to combat those malnutrition issues and hunger issues. So starting from that concept of respect for our ancestral foods, our ancestral knowledge, and that protection that we must have for our culture, I mean, this concept of feeding is fundamental. Hand in hand with that, I wish to highlight something that is also um, a great inspiration and to me has been uh, attractive for the youth in Colombia, which is the sustainability concept, innovation for nutrition, and the impact that we are launching today also has ingrained the actions of youth which is characterized by this component of responsibility uh, for the planet and for the concept of sustainability. And finally, innovation. Uh, that 2030 agenda that talks about the decade for action also refers to an accelerated action that could, uh, that is efficient and concrete in the achievement of those solutions. And this is achieved with innovation. And I am very pleased to talk about innovation that starts from the impetus of uh, youth and to see the youth contributing to those creative projects and contributing to their communities and expanding that capacity to the cities and the countries and the region as is being done today is uh, believing in a transformative future. It is going from words to action. It is to it is placing the future generations into action today, making them protagonists of the future that they crave for and that today they are constructing with their hands. I wish to cl uh, close by saying, by telling you that today we have more than ever a cause that unite, unites us, an urgency that unites us, and a link that perhaps is the most powerful one to make our dreams come true and to contribute to true solutions. And it is our humanity. Let that be the cause and the engine that moves us forward so that in a short period of time, we can say that thanks to this pact and thanks to this alliance and this um, joint effort, we can contribute to a citizens and a society so that many of those who in our countries suffer from hunger, from that for many of those who have suffered the death of one of their children due to malnutrition. Today, they can say, today, I am not hungry. We have the food, the micronutrients, and the necessary love so that I can ha have that on my table for my family to be complete and with a projection of future that leads to sustainable growth having a balance between economic development, social development, and of course, bearing in mind always that I, the identity, together with that vision and that flag of a prosperous future that we so much aim for. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, First Lady of the country, Mrs. Maria Juliana Ruiz. And now we give the floor to Mr. Uh, we gave to Mr. David Beasley, Executive Director of the World Food Program, who has sent this video.
Mr. President and First Lady, it is always a pleasure to be with you and thank you for your commitment. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to join you today for this Innovation for Nutrition Regional event. I want to thank the President and the First Lady for your commitment, your leadership on this issue, and your efforts to put zero hunger at the forefront of Columbia's development journey with the Grand Alliance for Nutrition. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. The world is slowly emerging from the worst global pandemic in a century, which continues to affect billions of people worldwide. In Latin America alone, food insecurity has increased fourfold since 2019. And the countries where we operate in the region have seen their GDP fall by up to 16% in a year. The impact of climate change is also being felt at the same time and particularly hard by vulnerable communities already struggling to survive. And this region is increasingly being impacted by mass migration. So I welcome the policies recently adopted by Columbia to provide temporary protection status to migrants and support their economic integration and development. Thank you. Every day, I meet leaders from the public and private sector, from civil society and local and, and global organizations who take decisions that impact the lives of millions of people. They make a difference. And we as leaders, we must make a difference. The Innovation for Nutrition Initiative is a great example of a cross-sectorial partnership to fight hunger and malnutrition. I hope it's one that other countries and regions will follow because it's needed. As we all know, food security and nutrition are fundamental rights and are critical to lay the foundations for stability and long-term economic development. So it is unacceptable that in today's world, 811 million people go to bed chronically hungry every single night. And on top of that, 283 million are marching toward starvation. At WFP, we are excited to be on this journey with you. And we pledge our full support as you take this important initiative forward. I thank each and every one of you for your commitment to the struggle against hunger and malnutrition. And I wish you a successful event today. Thank you, Mr. David Beasley. I don't know if you have the same idea as me, but by listening to him and to the First Lady, it is very important to use all these messages to become aware of how important this initiative is. But in order for this to uh, be successful, we need the commitment at every level from all of you. So I invite you to um, become imbued with this emotion transmitted by these uh, messages. Now, Mr. Carlos Caramela, who is the country representative of the World Food Programme. Gentlemen, uh, ambassadors, colleagues, friends, allies, partners who accompany us virtually, it is a true pleasure to be with all of you in this Innovation for Nutrition event. I wish to thank very sincerely the President and the First Lady of the Republic for their commitment, their efforts, for uh, placing the zero hunger goal uh, in the first place in the national agenda. I wish to thank the General Secretary for his words. Uh, thank you, Mr. David uh, Beasley, for representing our organization in this event at the highest level. We are here to reaffirm our common goals in order to generate action and to create equitative and fair societies. 
This is especially important in a moment where the world pandemic generated by COVID-19 and uh, worsened by the situation of poverty and nutritional insecurity throughout the region and uh, deepening the gaps and generating uh, new uh, issues. The issue of hunger is fundamentally a, pro, a, a topic of um, uh, social uh, non-inclusion. Um, millions of uh, people do not have anything uh, to eat or are very close to starvation. It is a critical situation and is unacceptable for humanity in, in the 21st century. Innovation for Nutrition is a visionary initiative that convokes us in this event. Uh, it is an initiative that has been promoted by the First Lady of the Nation, the Advisory Office for uh, Childhood and Adolescence, and the World Food Program of the United Nations. It is an initiative that promotes a combined uh, effort, including the political involvement and a strategic view, vision of the region and an implement, a systematic implementation of solutions through transformative policies that could accelerate and the fulfillment of the objective or goal of uh, zero hunger and a process of evaluation as uh, you heard from the First Lady and the empowerment of uh, the identities of the communities of uh, the ecosystems of the territories with a inclusive vision of social development. From the World Food Program of the United Nations, we um, uh, agreed this program that will be subscribed today uh, because it includes uh, all sorts of communities, people, countries, and regions a pact that promotes and affirms the right to uh, food and that places our young children, mothers and communities right in the middle of the development agenda and recognizes that hunger and, f and food insecurity are more than anything else, a social uh, problem that requires innovative um, um, solutions that enable people by promoting uh, ways for development. I think that it is very important for all those who are with us today to highlight the first points of the pact that will be subscribed today, in which it uh, would I declare nutrition and food security as the main axis for the development, social development of Latin America and the Caribbean in the action decade 2020 2030. As an inclusive approach and positive approach of the national and of the uh, food systems where they promote a state vision that transcends uh, political principles to, to ensure the continuation of the policies to achieve the zero hunger uh, goal. It uh, reaffirms the intergenerational, intergenerational uh, commitment so that the nutritional agenda is a goal for the new generations uh, and focused on childhood, adolescence, and youth. And it highlights also the need to ensure the human right to nutrition for all citizens, promoting a transformative uh, vision of food security as a common good. In spite of the complexity of the actual global context, we still have the same perspectives for the future. The urgency to confront the climate change they need to make of our societies something more just and inclusive and of modifying the uh, food systems so that they be can be more um, sustainable and resilient a, a very important focus are the all the fundamental factors that demand affirmative actions and transformative actions also that cannot wait any longer. What makes the difference in the social and economic uh, situation that we face today is the 
is our is the capacity as mentioned by the executive director of exercising an effective leadership based on a clear view of the priorities for so the social developments of our country the fight against hunger is today more than ever a priority that requires collective actions that are assertive and transformative and in this context it is with great satisfaction that we see that colombia has uh, embarked on a policy focused on the rights the human right to nutrition and we are committed to that and we uh, back them up from the world food program it is also an opportunity to uh, to recognize the leadership of the first lady of colombia who has been promoting the great alliance for nutrition that has um, required an intensive very intensive effort in colombia for the most vulnerable uh, populations in colombia we are also very pleased from the world food program of the united nations to learn that several countries of the region had joined this call uh, to sign the regional uh, uh, pact this makes us very proud and lets us view the future with great confidence to achieve the zero hunger goal for 2030 to all those countries that have expressed their will uh, to sign this pact and all uh, the allies i wish to thank you for uh, in thank you uh, for having an incidence with your decisions uh, in the life and nutrition of many children in the region our role from the world food program of the united nations is to accompany the governments and the communities in their search for transformative and sustainable uh, decisions for the nutrition of many families children men and women who suffer the devastating consequences of poverty and malnutrition in the rural and dispersed uh, territories and also urban territories with high vulnerability a phenomenon that was that that has uh, become worse during the past two years we are committed to continue with our efforts finally we share with the government of colombia the pride of officially launching the hub for food security in the region it's called h Euro, which will be the search engine for innovative solutions to have an impact on the communities who work for their fee for their food and nutritional goals we are committed to promote from the hub uh, based in bogota but with a regional view the development of communities and territories so that it becomes possible to have innovation and transformation in nutrition latin america and this has been mentioned is a continent with a, an extraordinary history of being able to do um, ag great efforts against malnutrition and poverty with a, they they have been known for their commitment to combat hunger there have been great changes as we are coming out of the pandemic we have to retake the control of our path for development to reposition uh, food security as a pillar for the po the policy for development of the region we invite you to accompany us all these uh, three days and to join innovation for nutrition and so that this can become an initiative that will join the region in an effort of transform uh, transformation and empowerment from different angles of society so that we can also consolidate alliances and partnerships for a zero hunger latin america we hope that the developments that will be discussed during the coming days will give us more light in this direction from the wfp thank you all for being a part of this event and for your commitment to the food and nutritional security of latin america and for the region thank you mr sanchez mr caramela scaramela and now 
we will listen to the presidential counselor for children. Good morning to all of you, First Lady. It is a pleasure. Uh, thank you for your leadership in the, on this important uh, aspect. And to the World Food Program, thank you for being with us. A very special greeting to all the ambassadors, the diplomatic core teams represented here in Colombia and to all the national and international organizations, and to all of those who are accompanying us and who have been present in this uh, effort, three-year effort, during which we have been working very intensely, the private sector, the academy, and to all those actors who are of fundamental importance, I would like to start by telling you a little bit about the motivation and and we wish to share with you uh, all uh, our experiences so that we can join initiatives. We have similar challenges, we have similar solutions, and it is thus how Colombia on August the 7th of 2018, the day that the president and the first lady invited me to become or to be a part of a governmental team, and they uh, proposed uh, a very important uh, topic for them to include in the governmental agenda, and it was to work for nutrition and food security in Colombia, to save lives, to improve our path to development. And it is, uh, that, that is my role. The nutrition and food security have a very determinant, determinant uh, role. It is, key for the development of children during those first uh, thousand days. And it was based on that invitation that we started to work and we were completely convinced that the first thing that we had to do was to position this uh, um, right up in the scale for all of us to be able to know how we could contribute. Many entities, many sectors, uh, did not see how they could contribute to nutrition and how they could contribute to the integral development of children. And that's where everything started. We started uh, trying to place nutrition in every sector as a priority. And, it, and during over the past three years, um, in 2019, March of 2019, we presented to the country the Great Alliance for Nutrition. And this was an invitation that we made uh, to all sectors and all actors to join hands and to help us work to improve the nutritional and food security situation. That day will be a memorable day or has become a memorable day for Colombia. That's when we started on a project that had been envisioned many years before, and it became a, a true, so that as the first lady said, we could eliminate the deaths of uh, children under five uh, due to malnutrition for us to strengthen food security of every single Colombian. And a third important across the board uh, issue, which also affects the entire world, was to also include as a priority the issue of obesity and this growing trend in the world and in children particularly, which is a call that we made because um, malnutrition is, is self-evident and it has consequences long-term where uh, obesity many times hides the issues that will become apparent in the future. And that call that uh, we made in 
March of 2019, uh, was included in our national uh, plan for development, and it was like a, a root map. And here I wish to mention some of the progress that has been made and that we uh, place at the disposal of this great regional alliance, of this pact, part of the institutional strengthening. In Colombia, we have an instance which is very important, the Intersectoral Commission for Food Security and Nutrition. We, that's where we started to work and to make all the actors aware so that, they, uh, so that we could understand how we can each contribute to, the, to, to this great goal. So we have the motivation to keep on working. The lowest rate ever since we started to measure this of children who died due to malnutrition of associated uh, risks has um, has been achieved. The positive use of very of a food product, the installed capacity in the different territories, and here. Uh, I wish to mention that today we are accompanied by the uh, representatives of 32 departments of Colombia who have been working um, with us in every territory in order to achieve results. We have uh, built installed capacity so that in the future this can be the basis for the development of the country in the um, short and mid-term working on education and pedagogy. And as our first lady said, we are in the decade of action and we have an enormous challenge that has become worse due to the pandemic. And it is here how after three years of working with the Food World Food Program, we have consolidated innovation for nutrition, a very arduous uh, effort that we have been creating, strengthening in order to leave a platform for Colombia and for the region where we can really accelerate the outcomes that the world requires nowadays in order to reduce and to eliminate hunger and to improve the, man, uh, the malnourishment uh, situation. That's how last year we presented innovation for nutrition by including a very important partner, the agency, uh, the innovation agency of the government. And um, they have, the expertise and the experience, and they have contributed to the consolidation and to the progress that has led to, to the creation of the regional hub. This is the second regional hub of the uh, World Food Program in the world. And as a region, Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, that, uh, we wish to say, let's get together to receive technical support and to receive financial assistance. We have very similar situations in many territories. We have great territorial diversity in our countries. We have cultural diversity, different costumes, but we have a great potential and unique opportunities such as biodiversity, the biodiversity that makes us wealthy and to see how we can take advantage of that. So that's how today we wish to thank you for being here. By, uh, for uh, thank you for listening to us because we can build a great alliance where we can share and face the challenges and the opportunities and take advantage of the opportunities. I wish to finish by leaving you with a message and it is zero hunger is not an unreachable goal. It is a challenge that claims that calls for our effort with our total commitment and our day-to-day -day engine. Let's not time to be a reference for the deaths of children, but a reference of smiles of those who are well nourished in body and soul. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Presidential Council for Children and Adolescents. Since February 2021, 
following the launch of the Innovation for Nutrition Initiative, a series of uh, successes has been achieved. And we have had several virtual uh, meetings and during those meetings, the decision makers and the experts have gathered to talk about the challenges and of the initiatives that have worked to combat hunger and malnutrition. Out of uh, these uh, dialogues, many important solutions have uh, been achieved. They have talked about the migrants crisis, the impact on nutrition and on food security uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the food programs of each one of the regions. We are going to share uh, throughout these three days of meetings, several of the conclusions of those meetings, as well as initiatives that have already been identified and that have yielded results and that need to be expanded to accelerate the achievement of that zero hunger goal, which is the goal of the sustainable development um, initiative. And now we will uh, give the floor to Alicia Barcenas, uh, who will give us a general panorama of the situation of the uh, nutritional Thank you for inviting me to this uh, global event about the transformations for Latin America, Zero Hunger, organized by the government of Colombia and the World Food Program. I am very pleased and it is an honor to greet the First Lady of the Nation, Maria Juliana Ruiz, and especially to greet David Beasley, Executive Director of the World Food Program, a colleague in the United Nations, and Carlos Caramela, director and representative, uh, country representative of the World Food Program, and uh, Mrs. Carolina Salgado, presidential advisor for childhood and adolescents. Likewise, I wish to greet Maria Dolores Castro, regional director of the World Food Program, and Mrs. Adriana Castro of the World Food Program also. Let me uh, offer you a brief presentation about the situation of the food systems for recovery in Latin America and the Caribbean, and which are some of the urgent actions against hunger. First of all, we have in the region an increase in the asymmetry of the uh, global asymmetry that has uh, increased uh, amongst the uh, or between developed and under and developing countries. First, access to vaccines. Thank. Second, access to financing and uh, to financing and technology. And our economy economy at the world level uh, is facing a divergent uh, recovery. Most of the fiscal stimuli and the investments are focused on developed countries, and we also observe great disparities in the response climatic uh, or climate responsibilities. And on the other hand, the concentration of economic power has increased the existing asymmetry and the political space that is distributed very unequally between the developed and developing economies. And in this context, also, the prevalence of a food, a very severe aliment, uh, food crisis has also increased. Here we see some examples of disparities. Uh, we can view this very clearly. This is uh, information from November the 8th. We see that the disparity in terms of uh, those countries with the uh, fully vaccinated people uh, is great. Chile, uh, we see, has a rate of seven, an average of 79.9. And in Latin America, the average is 49.7% uh, of people uh, who are vaccinated. And there are some countries that do not reach 
20% of the population with a complete vaccination scheme. And that is our concern. Colombia has made great efforts. It um, rates at 42.6. 42 and at this pace, we will not be able to reach the 70% goal of uh, vaccinated people. Our disparities with the European Union are great. Some countries have complete schemes, others 65.6, US uh, also has a, a not so high level. And this is not because our countries uh, do not have the vaccines available. People do not want to be vaccinated. Other examples of uh, symmetries are uh, relating to this economic gap between developed and developing uh, countries. The U.S. is investing uh, in packages of eight, above 18 percent of the uh, GMP, and uh, but our our countries in the region uh, have a great disparity um, regarding wealth. The U.S. has 50 percent of the world wealth. Wealth has increased, except in Latin America and the Caribbean. In our region, wealth decreased. And uh, climate, climate, our region contributes with 8.3% of the uh, global carbon emissions. And in spite of that, we are highly vulnerable. And uh, consequently, the adaptation in our region is indispensable. We're also a developing region that has been most affected by COVID-19, and we are facing a paradox of recovery, so much so that the region in 2021 will grow perhaps uh, 9.5 or more and 2.9% in 2022. And we could say that we are uh, on the path to recovery, but this is not so because employment uh, fell uh, greatly in 2020 and reached 54.7 percent of informality affecting uh, women and uh, young people uh, more than others and uh, these are great uh, social gaps that we will not be able to easily close at least not in the coming years and the digital gap that we have mentioned uh, a lot and uh, we have discussed with president duque where the region has 66 homes that are not connected and this has not allowed them to uh, for teleworking and the food system is a system that is in crisis due to the increase in the price of food and the uh, nutrition nutrition quality and our region as you can see is in red and this has been the most affected region in the world regarding employment and poverty in 2020 extreme poverty increased from 70 to 78 million people. It could have been uh, reaching 98 million um, had it not been for the government to carry out uh, social transfer programs of a great importance. And of course, uh, in uh, uh, regarding poverty, we have 209 uh, as, and this is very high, and there are 17 million farmers and fishermen who live in poverty and in informality and outside of the social protection systems. So in spite of the limited fiscal opportunities, the transfers of our countries have been important. Our countries adopted uh, over 263 non-contributive measures and re uh, being able to encompass 49% of the population and the implementation of recovery transformative policies will uh, demand the expansion of the fiscal uh, effort. Our governments have made great efforts to increase the total expenditures of the central government, but it is clear that if they do not maintain these measures of um, basic emergency income, poverty could increase. We could reach 220 million poor people and 92.3 million people in extreme poverty if we cannot expand these benefits. And of course, the adaptation to climate change 
the frailty in the face of natural disasters is enormous. And there have been uh, over 2,300 2, natural disasters and the costs for the recovery are great. The temperature increase has also been uh, increased and it has affected um, between 1.5 the challenges of the adaptation are enormous. Agriculture has been greatly impacted also negatively. And of course, we have op enormous opportunities to achieve mitigation, particularly in agriculture, in the energy sector, and of course, in every aspect. Agriculture is undoubtedly the most vulnerable sector. This is where we have seen the greatest affectations and of course a vulnerability about the uh, production of hydroelectric plants due to the uh, hydric challenge that our region has faced particularly in regions that are exposed uh, to desertification the, and diversity has not been um, well taken into consideration climate change what uh, has been creating a change in the rainfall uh, rates. And we think that there will be a reduction of 28% in the rainfalls. So this means that the drought season will be expanded. This has been the problem for the dry region of Guatemala and the western part of Salvador and also in Honduras. So that's how we think that it is important to focus on adaptation in these countries. The, the largest gap, the, the greatest gap regarding inflation, and this is uh, another uh, issue that the region faces, is the inflation in uh, food and beverages prices. You can see uh, on the graph how Inflation is much above, uh, inflation of uh, food and beverages is much, has, has increased greatly. The increase over the past year has been 9.9%, where other, other factors only 7.4. million people have food insecurity, and of those, 21 million suffer serious food insecurity. And these are the figures for our region. Latin America and the Caribbean are highly affected regions by food insecurity, 8.6% and uh, much below the world. But let's take a look at the Caribbean, which is 16.1%. In fact, our region is highly affected in relation to moderate and serious insecurity. Uh, together with the World Food Program, and I take this opportunity to thank David Beasley for his great support and Dolores Castro for their great support. Um, and we have been assessing the double cost of hunger or the double load of malnutrition where we have uh, is measured malnutrition, obesity, and the cost that this entails for the economy. How, how does uh, this impact the economy? Here we have four examples. In El Salvador, 10.3%. In Guatemala, 16.3%. In Honduras, 10.2%. And in the Dominican Republic, 2.6%. And when we see this cost of the double load in countries such as Chile, Ecuador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, um, they, they speak of, uh, of a great problem and it generates great concern. And of course, hunger. Hunger is something that is very, very serious. We have uh, drafted eight, reg eight recommendations to go from emergency to recovery. First, a joint and equitative distribution of uh, uh, of the vaccine. If without health, there can be no economy. 
to extend or expand the basic emergency income at least for the entire year of 2021 and perhaps the first quarter of 2022 to also uh, give a uh, voucher against hunger and to extend the grace periods for small and medium-sized companies because many of those companies are agricultural or family companies that are linked to the to the uh, production of food and we also aim to have a basic food uh, kit which includes a pc a tablet and perhaps uh, connectivity, low-cost connectivity, of course, expansive fiscal policies. We know that the monetary policies uh, nowadays are contracting, particularly regarding interest rates, but uh, we think that we must be careful enough so as not to go to fiscal adjustments, uh, early fiscal adjustments that could have negative effects on investments, employment, and sustainability at a moment where investment is very uh, much required. The voucher against uh, the kit against hunger, we believe that could cost between 0.06% and 0.45% of the GDP. Uh, it is a possible measure, and we could perhaps reach complementing the basic emergency income uh, it could cover this, uh, or it could cover a an important number of people. As I uh, we said, 203, 203 million people in poverty, and perhaps 98, 98 million people under extreme poverty, and of course the extreme poverty of more than 65 years. And here we believe that our concrete actions we can undertake the increase in soft credits for the productive agricultural sectors to increase uh, the uh, loans by 20% so that the development banking sector um, could help uh, make this uh, uh, a reality and to also have access to resources that could reach uh, the farmlands and we believe that this is possible. It is possible to um, uh, give this uh, to 40% of the family agricultural uh, activities. We believe that there are 10 elements to achieve the transformation of the food systems in Latin America and the Caribbean. We have discussed this with the um, World Food Program. And this is a part of the, the declaration of the agency's funds and programs uh, during the um, uh, uh, the recent summit, first to recognize the uh, indisputable relation uh, between the natural environment and the human environment, to guarantee the sustainability in the use of the soil and of water in the ecosystemic services on which agricultural sector depends very much on to promote the sustainable use of the uh, agri agricultural biodiversity resources and to include the, or to incorporate the social inclusion criteria in the public policies that have to do with the food systems and to approach the climate action uh, in the agricultural efforts with a priority on the adaptation oriented to the construction of resilience and the promotion of synergies between the adaptation actions and the mitigation actions. Also, number six, to improve the quality and the impact of investments, including those on uh, that have to do with science, technology, and innovation. The call to action of the General Secretary uh, about the food systems today more than ever is an urgent call to promote the health and the well-being of everyone because malnutrition, hunger are not results of nature, but they are the result of our inaction and it depends on us to improve that and it is necessary 
to protect the systems that contribute to nutrition for water, etc. We need sustainable production methods based on nature and that can promote the inclusive prosperity aligned with the 2030 agenda. Not only the sustainability of the companies and their shareholders, but the sustainability of the entire chain. Thank you very much for your kind attention, and we hope that this presentation has been of interest for all of you. Yes, it was a very interesting uh, presentation because it gives us a diagnosis, precise data for us to take actions, but it also provides uh, feasible uh, solutions for those challenges. I told you earlier on that we would be sharing several stories about contributions to combat hunger in our territories. And now we will present the first one. It is the case of ancestral organics. It is um, a project uh, to have a sustainable system through regenerative agriculture and through the redistribution and commercialization of their products. Hello, I am Mateo Ospina. I am a co-founder of Ancestor Organics. In Ancestor Organics, we created a sustainable and scalable system where we provide healthy food for people and the planet through regenerative agriculture from our organic and biodynamic uh, plant, uh, crops and through our own operation in the commercialization and distribution of our products. We export to the United States and very soon to Germany and the UK with our regenerative uh, products, our oils, snacks, and species. Uh, we are reducing the vulnerability uh, um, uh, against uh, climate change because we have very healthy crops and it is the most uh, rapid and clear solution to capture carbon. We aim uh, to have healthy and sufficient food for everyone in the entire value chain. Initiatives such as ours contribute to solve the problem that we are facing today in Colombia and the world. With our program, we can demonstrate that by changing the consumption patterns, we can mitigate the climate change. We can generate equality for the most vulnerable sectors of the population, and we can provide nutritious products. Food insecurity impacts all of us, but we all have the solutions at hand. So science, innovation, and awareness are of vital importance to ensure food security and to also ensure or guarantee the continuation of a healthy planet. The ancestral practices are the answer to all of this. The ancestral wisdom understands the wisdom of nature and it maintains a healthy balance between nature and people. Polycrops in diversity, ancestral wisdom is equivalent to being aware about all of this. And this is Ancestor Organics, healthy food for the health of the planet and for the health of people. Just as uh, this initiative, there are many others, but there can be others uh, that we can start not just uh, being witnesses, because as you can see, we can, uh, we can do a lot. 
in the video, you saw that it was a young person, but it's not just for young people. We all can, we all have the power to transform our nature. We can also put into action all our creativity to create initiatives in order to reach the goals uh, of the zero hunger. So there is a very interesting part and uh, we hope that you program yourselves to start the creativity on the, the 25th as part of the agenda of three, three days, we will launch the hub, the innovation hub called Zero Hunger. That hub will be based in Colombia for all the region and it will be supported by the already existing hub in Germany. I think that uh, uh, they we mentioned this before the idea. This hub will be based in Colombia for the whole region and will be supported by the hub that already exists in Germany. I, I think that uh, the presidential advisor, Carolina, talked to us about this. So what is the idea behind the Munich hub? It is to be able to create alliances, to be able to identify initiatives that have worked, to look, identify disruptive uh, innovations, uh, to empower all of these uh, society actors that are doing something that need the support that can be created through these alliances and also to identify and support all of the initiatives that we need to create uh, an ecosystem with technical capacity with integral and timely interventions that would allow us to meet the goal of zero hunger. So please stay tuned for Thursday's part on this. Right now we will have a panel discussion. We will have three panelists. And for the last part of the panel, you're going to be very important because we need for you to send us your questions and obviously you will make comments. We won't have time to answer all of them, but I can tell you how we can do this. You can go into innovationfornutrition.org or you can download our app, Innovation for Nutrition. You can find it in any app store. And you can also send your questions through virtual platforms through which we are broadcasting, which are the Facebook channel and the YouTube channel for the, from the WFP. For our panel, we have the dynamic is that we're going to have three questions for our panelists, and I'm now going to introduce them. For our panel called Resetting the Agenda for Zero Hunger in Latin America and Caribbean, Abigail Perry, Director of Nutrition from the World Food Program. Before she came to the program, she was head of nutrition policy at the Commonwealth and uh, for the commonwealth in the uk among other important positions we also have with us maximo torero she is a chief of economists of the fao and the file the fao and looks at the analysis of poverty and inequality and and the importance of public and private finances to and its dynamics to explain poverty and bb La Luz Gonzalez, she comes from Guatemala. She is, a, she is a chef and she is the founder of Eat Better Waik. This is an organization that seeks to reduce malnutrition through edu creative and inclusive education through education, economics, transformation, and ecology. Among other things, she was recognized as one of the 100 most powerful women in Central America by Forbes magazine. So we will connect with them that are online. And we will also hear from Maximo in a pre-recorded state. Let's 
await the connection, but for now, as I said, we will have interventions, live interventions through digital means and a pre-recorded video. Should I start the conversation or should I continue with another part of the panel? Please let me know. As I said earlier, there are many ways to engage with innovation for nutrition. Yes, I think we have Bibiana and Abigail with us. How are you, Bibi? In Guatemala? Ooh. We are going to correct this echo. We have you on audio, but we need to make some adjustments. Abigail, good morning, good afternoon. Yes, let's test the audio once more. You all know that these digital channels makes things possible, but sometimes they require a few tweaks. Oh. Innovation for Nutrition was launched in February and we have achieved a lot so far as you have seen. Do we have Abigail? So one of these milestones that we have achieved so far is to acquire, is to have the commitment to be able to launch the hub that, as I said, we are going to do it this Thursday. The other was to sign the compact We will give you a list of countries that have already signed on to this commitment to this compact. I'm going to read it to you and the representatives of these countries will be able to sign it. And we will also have messages from different Latin American presidents uh, from pre-recorded videos, which we will broadcast and each will tell us why they are joining this compact and how their country will be able to contribute to the success of this compact. In this innovation for nutrition, innovation, uh, innovation for nutrition program uh, received 200 proposals from 80 countries and eight proposals were selected. And these winning proposals are going to receive training they are going to possibly receive uh, monetary support and they are going to be able to participate in a sprint program that will enable their initiatives to be escalated we also achieved these regional dialogues where we made emphasis on migra migration crisis the impact of the pandemic and the reality of our latin american and caribbean food systems where we identified initiatives, possible alliances, and possibilities to move forward our goal, which is zero hunger as per the SDGs. So are we okay? So I'm going to say hello to Abigail once more. Due to technical reasons, I'm just going to first ask the questions. So the first question.
Guatemala to reduce malnutrition. But yes, I hope that one day I could introduce a dish to you that was prepared by myself. In terms of the regional outlook to fulfill or to be able to comply with the 2030 agenda, first of all, we need to recall that uh, the Millennium Goals were not complied with by many countries. And the themes behind the SDGs had to do with the summit of food systems that said that we only have nine crops, or in some cases, eight crops in the 2030 agenda. And this also talks a lot about climate uh, agri farmers. As we heard in the last presentation, 17 million farmers and 2 million uh, Fishermen are very affected. We need to recall that this Latin American summit is, is very different to the global narrative on food. We have our own characteristics and based on these, we need to move forward and understand their own realities. We have also talked about our inequalities in the region, uh, very a lot of inequalities in, in the region and climate change is affecting these further when uh, the rain comes or in the Southern countries that have uh, seasons, also droughts and floods. Some people are being impacted more than others. But we have to recall that us are not exactly contributing or being in a role model on how to behave. So I think this is an area where there is an opportunity to be a role model and to be a, a, a role model as a region in terms of moving forward in, in food themes and how do we tackle them? How do we work with our populations? Because this is a region that has a lot of indigenous communities, which we have to recognize there is a lot, a lot of issues regarding health within these communities, the, the, and, but also their, their, tie, their ties to Mother Nature. And I am myself, I'm from Guatemala, and Guatemala ranks last in the Index on Closing Gender Gaps, published by the World Economic Forum. So based on these all inequalities we need to look at their ties to food security in terms of food and and gender inequality there's a lot of modern slavery in the food system and it is born especially by women we have in this region that tortillas which is the example of a basic food staple that we celebrate but if we look what is behind it we see that corn can have a different meaning or sometimes we hear about it, but we don't hear a single voice on the matter because we talk about hunger. We also talk about obesity and overweight. We talk about the double burden of malnutrition. I also talk about the triple burden, which includes health issues. So I expect that we can remove the technicalities from food or make it, make it our own, make food our own and not talk about so much technicalities and terms and just maybe go to the essence of our vocabulary, of our narrative and to be able to understand it better. But so that's it for this question. Thank you. Estimados colegas, es un placer para mí estar con ustedes hoy. Eh, mi presentación de hoy día va a hablar sobre los desafíos regionales en la seguridad alimentaria y nutricional para el logro de la Agenda 2030 en América Latina. Dear colleagues, it is a pleasure for me to be with you today. Today's presentation will have to do with the regional challenges in food 
security and also to be able to achieve the 2030 agenda in Latin America and the Caribbean. To start with, let me share my PowerPoint presentation. My presentation will focus first of all on the global aspect and then on the uh, Colombian aspects. First of all, when we look at the main challenges to end with hunger, malnutrition, and we need to look at what has happened structurally and even before COVID-19, we had the issue of conflicts that uh, made malnutrition worse, a problem with climate variability and, ex and climate extremes and a problem with what we call recessions. These are the three main structural drivers that explained why we had chronic malnutrition that were not that was not coming down. But now we have the pandemic and the effects of the pandemic and how this is affecting and generating economic clashes and setting back the process that uh, that was ongoing and uh, as well our achievement of the 2030 agenda. We have also seen that access to healthy diets has been restricted to, uh, we have 3 million people that can't access healthy diets. So what is this, what was the situation, the region before COVID-19? Before COVID-19, we had a region where we saw an increase in mal chronic malnutrition. We see how in Latin America and the Caribbean, it was moving up to 2030. We saw, we expected an increase of 9.5%, and this was going to be seen also in South America and Mesoamerica. The Caribbean is going to the mal chronic malnutrition was going to come down in, in the Caribbean by two percent. So before nine, COVID nineteen, we already had a serious problem that was not uh, helping us uh, achieve our goals for twenty thirty. This is tied to the fact that healthy diets are expensive and are not accessible for a good part of the population. So the cost of a diet is very high especially for Latin America, it is 3.9, almost $4 per person. And this is a figure that is close to the global average, but in the Caribbean region, it's much more higher. It's $4.21 to access for a healthy diet. And this leads uh, to a large part of the population to not have access to a healthy diet, also access to adequate diet in terms of lower cost nutrients and also the diet in terms of just caloric elements, but the costs are well above the world averages. So this has led to the fact that of why Latin America and the Caribbean has 104 million people that do not have access to healthy diets. And in, to in total around the world, 3 billion people, but the numbers are higher in Mesoamerica and the Caribbean, where we have reduced taxes due to restriction to healthy diets. So there's a lot of work to be done and be able to increase access to healthy diets in the region and also around the world. When we look at other nutrition indicators, we see that acute malnutrition in boys and girls in Latin America and the Caribbean, according to their region, well, maybe they have numbers have come down regarding the world averages, but in the last couple of years, this, this reduction has become less than the world averages. In the region, the lag in the growth, growth lags in children under five years old was had an important de decrease, which was an achievement before COVID-19 and chronic malnutrition re was reduced from 22.7 in 1990 to 9% 9 in 2019. On the other hand, we have a serious problem is uh, child overweight. Uh, over uh, from 6.2 in 1990 to 7.5 in 2019, reaching uh, which is above the world average, which is 5.6 percent. And by 2019, we had 4.7 million with growth lags and uh, on other millions in overweight. As we can see in the in overweight adults in 2016, we saw that around the world there was an increase, but also in in terms of overweight and obesity but the increase is very high in our region and pretty high in Mesoamerica. And we also see that the percentage of people that cannot have access to healthy diets, we also have countries like Haiti, Suriname, Jamaica, where the rates are very high, well above 50%. Haiti is the extreme with 88%. So the high percentage of people that don't have access to healthy diets in the region could promote, it could lead to overweight and obesity in adults. A healthy diet could, in, could improve 
chronic malnutrition and it could also improve overnutrition, reduce chronic malnutrition and reduce overweight and obesity. But in the region, overweight and obesity are on the increase and affects today 262 million adults and 50 million children and adolescents. And non-transmissible diseases that are account of this problem are the main cause of mortality in Latin America and the Caribbean. And three out of four cause three out of four deaths for a total of 2.8 million. Three out of four deaths are due to non-transmissible, non-transmissible diseases or non-communicable diseases. We need to take this into account in terms of finances because we look at the economic cost of these diseases that it will imply a strong increase in our health and nutrition budgets. Thank you, Maximo, for sending this important message. I would like to know if we still have Abigail. Oh, so we will end this panel discussion there. And we will not be able to ask our panelists questions due to time restraints. Thank you to Abigail, Perry, and Vivi La Luz, and Maximo Torero. Now, what we are going to do is to sign the compact. I'm going to read what the compact is, and then we will hear from Latin American presidents, and then we will invite representatives up to sign the compact. The compact will drive a shared, coherent, inclusive, communitary, and solidary vision in the fight against malnutrition to accelerate compliance with the SDGs of the SDG number two, which is zero hunger. From 1990 to 2010, Latin America and the Caribbean achieved significant progress towards reducing malnutrition, food and food safety and food security due to policies aimed specifically to these objectives. Notwithstanding, in the last decade, the region has seen a significant increase in hunger and malnutrition. In most countries in the region, we have malnutrition, obesity, and overweight, the double malnutrition burden that affects the most vulnerable communities and ethnic groups. So this is a situation that has made worse by the pandemic. Access to food is a fundamental right and nutrition is a fundamental part of cognitive development in children, which translates into social benefits and human productivity and uh, the development of our countries. And the first thousand days of a child's life need continue to be key for their further development to the new evidence suggests that the first 21 years of an individual also require specific interventions so that each person achieves all of their potential and can have a positive impact on social capital and it's very important for the regional countries uh, ngos civil society sectors the private sector joins us to drive to this vision forward of zero hunger and accelerate complying with SDG number two. This is a first step towards achieving a multi-actor compact. We have... I send a warm hello to Maria Dolores Casta, Regional Director of the WFP, to my wife, Maria Antonia Ruiz, First Lady of Colombia, to Karina Salgado, and to all 
presidents, ambassadors, and assistants to this event. Colombia and the WFP create a, a call out to the region to create alliances and contribute to zero hunger. We do this through the Innovation for Nutrition Initiative led by the Office of the First Lady of Colombia and by the President's Council for Children and Adolescents that seeks to accelerate progress towards the goal of a region without hunger with a multi-actor and stakeholder approach. This is an objective that as humanity we have for 2030. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has deepened these problems. And in fact, in 2020, it affected more than 9% of Latin America's population. In the face of this, we had to accelerate our efforts to achieve a future without hunger, even more so taking into account that we are in the decade of action for the United Nations according to the United Nations. So this is why we present today the Compact for a Great Alliance for Nutrition and Zero Hunger in Latin America and the Caribbean, with which we seek to elevate the food security agenda as a central axis for social development. I am sure that with it, we will sh have a shared vision under the principles of inclusion, diversity, respect for human rights that will have a positive impact on malnutrition in each of our countries. Under this framework, we also launch H0, an innovation hub where we will incubate, accelerate and escalate disruptive in interventions to have a region without hunger. In Colombia, we place this at the center of the agenda and we have materialized it through, the con through consolidating a work plan against malnutrition that allowed us in 2019 to reduce deaths among five, under five-year-olds associated to malnutrition. It cut down by 5%, and we, and we cut it, it last year by 28%. So we are demonstrating with facts that we can achieve great transformations through collaboration and collaborative work. So this is why we thank the countries that are signing the this compact, and I extend my invitation to all nations and organizations to join this compact so that we can continue to eradicate hunger and malnutrition and My esteemed friend and colleague, President of Colombia, Ivan Duque, ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely thank you for this invitation. I express Chile's honor to be a, a participant of this important action with which we commit ourselves to fight against malnutrition and move towards collective solutions, and provide our provide a community's access to healthy diets. Today, we commit ourselves to move forward towards sustainable food systems that include production, storage, regulation, consumption, and handling and loss of waste, uh, handling of waste. We need to care, take care of the food that nourishes our homes. The quality of nourishment has a great impact on physical, mental, and social development of a human being, and especially in early childhood. Aware of this reality, Chile undertook a great commitment for it, with its program with Fruits and Vegetables, which is an initiative together with the UN and FAO that has increased the consumption of fruit and vegetables around the world and in all sectors, contributing positively towards a better nutrition, towards a better quality of life in current and future generations. On the national scale, by creating the program Choose to Live Healthy in 2003, we have worked tirelessly to educate, dif disseminate, and promote a healthy diet culture, trying to create awareness 
and developing good habits in our in the population. Choose to live healthy, healthy, healthy promotes a healthy lifestyle through good nutrition, sports, family ties, and more contact with nature. In times of pandemic, we have seen the importance of a healthy diet for the correct uh, functioning of the immune system, a system that protects us from so many diseases. Through COVID-19, we saw the difference between a poor diet and a healthy diet. It could mean the difference between life and death. A key area to promote healthy diets and good health habits is uh, school food programs. In Chile, this concern is not new to us. We have a school food program, as Colombia has, with that has been active for more than 60 years and throughout the decades has guaranteed healthy, balanced, and safe food to the most vulnerable children, decreasing hunger, defeating children, child malnutrition, and creating healthy food habits. During 2021, this program will benefit more than 1.8 million young boys and girls and adolescents in Chile. To drive state actions is important to safeguard nutrition and health in our population. This is why in Chile and Colombia, we are being pioneers in terms of food regulation by implementing measures like the food law or the labeling law that not only requires foods with high levels of uh, saturated fats, sugar, salt, have to make it evident in their label, but we have moved forward as well significantly in progressively reducing these uh, unhealthy elements in our foods. The initiative that calls us here today that has been promoted by Colombia will be an important complement to these measures. By promoting policies that allow us to reach the goal of zero hunger, promote the right to food, food safe, security, safe foods and traditional foods as well, and increase in research and innovation in terms of food security and healthy foods. I would like to end by congratulating President Ivan Duque and the First Lady Maria Juliana Ruiz for their arduous and important effort that they have led and for calling us today to work together to fight against hunger, malnutrition, and of course, I would like to reiterate our Chile's commitment to the Compact for a Great Alliance for Nutrition and Zero Hunger in Latin America and the Caribbean. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I send a warm welcome on behalf of the government of Guatemala, and I thank you for inviting me to participate in this event, which the purpose of which is to sign the Compact for a Great Alliance for Nutrition and Zero Hunger in Latin America and the Caribbean. The, inno the Innovation for Nutrition led by the Office of the First Lady of Colombia and the WFP is in line with strategies created by my government called the Great Crusade for Nutrition through which we have implemented support uh, programs for vulnerable families. Among other things, we are part of the coalition for school nutrition driven by the, through which we want to highlight the country strategies to contribute towards the growth and development of boys, girls, and adolescents, focusing on school learning and creating good health food habits. Guatemala is committed to guarantee food security and nutrition security, combat malnutrition. This is why my country is going to sign the compact and we support the innovation, the innovation for nutrition initi initiative that I'm convinced will bring great benefits to the region. Access to food is a basic right and we recognize that the great challenges of extreme poverty and food insecurity perpetuate the gen intergenerational cycle of poverty and malnutrition. We firmly believe in aligning the efforts to strengthen the initiatives 
and to promote opportunities that will have a positive impact on the social capital, making it more healthy, more productive, and with better income for their families. It is important to create solutions and mechanisms to strengthen social protection to the most vulnerable groups. I thank the invitation made by the Colombian government by t and leading us towards a common goal. We expect to continue to work with this initiative so that our efforts join it, it and we can guarantee the nutrition of current and future generations. Now, we will. I will sign the compact. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, please receive my most warm, my warmest welcome. I thank Colombia and the WFP for organizing this event that focuses our attention collectively on fundamental aspects for the development of our societies, such as nutrition and eradicating hunger. One of the central aspirations of the 2030 Agenda is that nobody misses the opportunity to develop all of their potentials due to avoidable causes. This is why the government of Peru the, has assigned greatest priority to education, health, and food security with particular emphasis on vulnerable populations and boys, small, young boys and girls. The search for innovative methods for better nutrition have a lot of potential to bring us closer as a region towards the goal of eradicating hunger and malnutrition. Especially if we maintain a decentralized approach and an inclusive approach. In this sense, it is a pleasure for me to transmit our Peru's support of the compact to create a great alliance for against malnutrition and zero hunger in Latin America and the Caribbean, with the hope that this very plausible initiative will become a platform to exchange information and good practices to be able to plan joint actions for the region and the multilateral agencies and to conceive it. After the pandemic, we need to reconstruct our societies. Particularly the multilateral system. First of all, we need to mitigate the, ex the growth of the virus and to protect our populations. Then we need global vaccination and just and fair access to vaccines was at the center of our national and international agendas over the last months, as well as the necessary economic reactivation. Currently, even though we are still tending to the economic and sanitary emergency, our efforts are also aimed 
and mitigating the social consequences provoked by the COVID-19 pandemic in this process of systemic reconstruction, especially for the Latin American and Caribbean region, marked by historic inequalities, it is very relevant to continue to move towards the SDGs. On behalf of President Jair Bolsonaro, I would like to thank President Ivan Duque and the First Lady Mariana Juliana Ruiz for launching this important initiative to create a regional alliance to promote nutrition and to combat hunger. The government of Brazil has undertaken great efforts to guarantee that all Brazilians have access to healthy foods and nutritious and of good quality in the frame in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic we have destined many millions of dollars to ensure uh, income for informal workers we created the nourish brazil program to increase food security among the most vulnerable families by transferring government federal funds to the states and municipalities i ha also have to mentioned the Auxil Brazil program that replaces the Boza Familia program, which destines 20% of income received by benefits and also increasing the total number of participants to 17 million families. By participating in the Great Alliance, Brazil joins the regional efforts towards the common goal of eliminating hunger and promoting healthy, nutritious foods in Latin America. Thank you. Well, this is the commitment you have heard. You, we didn't hear from all of them, but there are nine countries that will sign it. And now I will like to invite the representatives of these nine countries to come up to the stage and you can sign the board, you can leave us a message Madame Lola will also be invited to sign. So without further ado, please just get up. There is no protocol. You can come up. And once you sign it, please remain here in front of the stage so we can take the official picture, the official photograph.
Yo sé que... Bueno, les pedimos a los representantes de cada uno de los países que son firmantes del pacto que se acerquen aquí. Es un representante por país, por favor, para tomar la foto oficial. Y también queremos... Así como la consejera para la presidencial para la niñez, Carolina Salgado, por favor. Sí. No, yo creo que es allá, porque yo no voy a salir. Invitamos también a la primera dama, María Juliana Ruiz, a que nos acompañe para hacer la foto oficial. Recuerden que es un representante por país. Yo voy a correr esto.
Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Este pacto está creciendo. Qué rico Thank tantas personas much. que se han comprometido a través de su firma. Les pedimos a quienes ya firmaron que por favor tomen asiento. Nos falta solo la parte final para concluir. Entonces necesitamos de nuevo que tomen asiento, que nos organicemos. Thank you very much. I see many signatures on the board. We have to translate into action projects. We will take final photographs. Thank you all. We have still the last part of today's agenda, so please take a seat. I know that many of us are awaiting the delicious foods that we were promised by the chefs at the beginning. So we just have two more points on the agenda before we wrap up for today. Uh, we were not able to receive all uh, pre-recorded videos on time, but Ecuador, El Salvador already will also We'll sign the compact. There are nine countries in total, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Ecuador. Right now, we will have the musical part of our agenda. We will hear from musical groups that are representatives of the region that together with other artists are going to be joining us throughout this three-day event to sh sharing their music, inspiring us, reminding us of our cultures, ethnic sounds. Today we have Ana Beido from the Cimarron Group. She comes from the Orinoquio region of Colombia. Hello, my name is Ana Bedoyo from the Cimarron Group. We have brought the sounds of Orinoco to the group. Every one of us in Cimarron are spokespeople of the territories of Ca Arauca, Casanare, Meta, El Bichada, Guaviare, Boyacá. These Colombian states are very rich in natural resources needed to recover needed to for food security we would like to join the wfp program and make a call out to the authorities to the public sector to the private sector to our community leaders to all commit ourselves to overcoming the deep inequalities in our territories and that way eradicate malnutrition to Colombian women, the only war that is worth fighting is the war against hunger in our communities. We join our voices to this cause. Cimarron is with zero hunger. Palomita nube de agua Palomita nube de agua Palomita 
palomita, palomita, párate con atención. Recibe cuatro palabras de este pobre corazón. Palomita, no me da. para el grupo Cimarrón y Ana Beidó. ¿No les parece muy bello? Muy lindo, ¿verdad? Bueno, pues muchísimas gracias yes. a Ana, que seguramente... Thank you to the Cimarrón Group, very beautiful music. Por esa belleza de canción que nos envió y por ese video tan lindo. Thank you for sending this. Para... Beautiful video. Let's hear it for Cimarrón Group. Thank you, Anna. That is surely. Yes, I have the toughest job of being between you and lunch. So. I was just going to take three more minutes of your time to the first lady. Thank you so much for producing this event. And thank you to the government of Colombia for promoting this initiative. It has been exceptional. In the Latin American Caribbean region, we have a lot of potential. We have a lot of biodiversity. We have a, and nutritional biodiversity, but we have the burden of malnutrition. We have heard many figures, many, a lot of data, many statistics that talk about a serious problem.
problem of food insecurity and chronic malnutrition in our region. Not only malnutrition, but the double burden, which is obesity and how it affects our economies, how it affects development, how it affects the future of this region. And this event today highlights the fact that governments working together with civil society and the United Nations with the WFP, the FAO, IFA, UNICEF, and we are all working together. We are all striving towards the same goal. And just to wrap it up, I expect that today is not just an event that does not translate into action. We need it to be something that we are really going to implement, to work on, that we are going to draft policies and strategies accordingly, and that we are going to reach the most vulnerable. We are going to reach our indigenous communities, Afro descendants, those that bear the greatest burden of malnutrition in our continent, and that we will do it through these agreements that we have made today, and especially through this Center for Innovation that is going to be uh, launched on Thursday and the Innovation for Nutrition Initiative. So I would like to congratulate all of the governments that have signed the compact and I congratulate you, I commend you, and especially for continuing and moving forward towards implementing our, uh, the, and working for the needs of the most vulnerable. We are working towards the same together and we will surely... Muchísimas gracias, Lola, por eso. Thank you to the government of Colombia, civil society organizations, the media, all of the stakeholders involved. So with this, we wrap it up. Thank you, Claudia, for allowing me last remarks. Thank you, Lola, for your kind words and your positive energy. So as promised, we have a wonderful menu that Jennifer Antonelli and Eduardo talked about earlier. So we will see each other tomorrow and the day after we will connect through Innovation for Nutrition or through the Facebook channel of the WFP or for the President's Office for Children and Adolescents. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thank <laughs> you.